Andy, we have a few questions from our shareholders. The first question is from R. Brock Frost. Please provide updated guidance on launch cadence and integration and deployment of the ASIC chip. Has the company switched focus from commercial to government revenue? If not, what does management see as the future split of business? Wow. Uh, thank you, Mr. Frost, for that question. I'm happy to address it. As a reminder, we've previously given guidance for satellite launch and a, and a manufacturing cadence, and I'm happy to report that we remain on track for when we first announced our plans, which I think was back at the Q1 2025 earnings call. And I guess to recap, we continue to anticipate launches every one to two months on average this year and through next year, 2026, with our first Block 2 Bluebird satellite, again, our first of this Block 2, we expect to ship this quarter with a launch scheduled shortly in July of 2025. Uh, regarding satellite manufacturing, as part of the question, we remain on track with the manufacturing of 40 Block 2 Bluebird satellites. And beyond that, the procurement components of materials needed to complete fully assembled microns and phased arrays for over 50 total satellites. So we're very, very excited about that. We continue to expect satellite manufacturing to reach a cadence of six satellites a month before the end of this year with a uh, phased array equivalent cadence reaching uh, the target during Q3 of 2025. So next quarter. Um, on the ASIC front, we have our novel ASIC chips. They're currently undergoing assembly and testing. There are no stages uh, while the validation qualification stages are near completion. Uh, we expect the ASIC chips will become available for satellite integration as early as later this month. The second part of your question, Mr. Frost, the company has always approached this business with uh, balanced, deliberate approaches between both commercial and government business. Uh, the business we derive revenue from today is driven primarily by the government business. Uh, the business we derive uh, in the future will be driven by a mix in, in, in commercial and, uh, and government opportunities. Um, the government piece today is largely driven by the scope of work and the immediate use case that can be achieved with the satellites that are currently in order as well as the addition of uh, the Block 2 Bluebird satellites that I referenced will be deployed soon. Over time, we expect the commercial business to ramp uh, aggressively as we scale the satellite deployments. Think of it that way, satellite deployments will lead to more commercial opportunity. The increasing time per day in which we're able to provide cellular broadband connectivity direct to your unmodified device is driven, obviously, by the number of satellites overhead. And as we mentioned previously, proud to reiterate that we've conducted at this point live demos with our partners at AT&T and Verizon in the U.S., Vodafone in Europe, and Rakuten in Japan. And we're working toward a scaled beta service sometime by the end of this year and a commercial service fully open for consumers sometime in early 2026. As far as thinking long-term on that split, we still believe the commercial opportunity will become the lion's share of our revenues while growing our government business to a healthy and robust contributor, both, both driven by the differentiated technology and the fact that our satellites have dual use capabilities. So they're both quite important going forward with government leading now and commercial kept catching up as we uh, continue our uh, old initiatives to launch satellites. So thank you for that question. My any others? Yes. Um, the, our second question is from Alex Petri. Optimism around the Golden Dome. Could you elaborate? Absolutely. Thanks, Alex, for the question. And again, this is a topic that we addressed just briefly in our Q1 2020, 2025 earnings call. Um, we, we believe that we're well positioned with our technology to be not only a contributor, but a very important contributor to the actual goals outlined in the, uh, the federal government, the U.S.'s Golden Dome program that, that we hear about daily. We think the size and power of our satellites are unique, completely differentiated from what can be done by others in the industry or by 
adversaries to our country. And we think that our technology will enable applications for national security. They're going to be important for the Golden Dome program. Importantly, we see the Golden Dome opportunity and we feel is yet another chance for us to be strongly participating with the government, a government in the U.S. that's already using our satellites for applications that are supportive for the needs of that program through certain aspects that relate to some of our current government programs. So uh, thank you for that question and i um, happy to report that we believe it will be uh, a significant opportunity for us. Ending Alice. Yeah, thank you, Andy. Um, our, our third question is from Nick Griffin. The designs for FM1 and FM2 seem to differ substantially from expected designs and are much heavier. Please, can you explain why? Interesting. Okay, good. Uh, thank you for the, the question, Nick. And, and again, for those listening, FM1 is the first of our Block 2 satellites. And of course, after FM1 comes FM2. Um, so FM1 and FM2 themselves, uh, those designs follow a you know, substantially similar design framework as our overall Block 2 uh, Bluebird program. Uh, for context, our upcoming Block 2 satellites are more than, I guess, three times the size of our Block 1 satellites, or five that we have in orbit now. The Block 2 satellites measure an incredible uh, 2,400 square feet in size. And as a result, we need a much smaller number of satellites compared to traditional operators in LEO or low Earth orbit. And the design of our satellites network decreases any single point of failure, which reduces our risk profile. Um, it is true that the Block 2 satellites, given that size, are heavier than our Block 1 satellites. And that's driven by that size increase with uh, uh, Bluebird Block 2 satellites after FM1 and FM2 moving to more uh, optimized composite exteriors, which will help us reduce the overall weight of the satellite and critically will help us maximize the payload on some of our launch providers. Uh, less, less weight equals more satellites for launch. So great question. Yeah, thank you. All right, Andy, we have um, two more questions. So the next question is from Hal Wang. Can you talk about liquidity and funding for the planned launches and satellites? Absolutely. Thanks, Hal, for the, uh, the question on uh, liquidity and, and uh, funding. As a reminder, we last reported liquidity as of March 31st at the end of Q1. And at that point, we had uh, $874.5 million in cash, cash equivalents, restricted cash. And then we recently announced a, a, uh, a new 2025 at the market or ATM facility for up to $500 million over a three year facility term. Um, and in addition, we've continually reported and provided updates on our ongoing diligence uh, for over a $500 million quasi governmental funding with uh, XM and the IFC. And, uh, and this, in addition to our recent January comparable note offering earlier this year, in which we raised roughly 460 million. So we've been very active in, in raising the required capital to support our plans to not only manufacture 40 plus satellites, but to launch, um, those and more over the period this year through next. Um, we do feel well capitalized and continue executing against those operational plans, which uh, continue for the second half of 25 and 26. And uh, as you'd expect, we're very much focused on satellite manufacturing and launch so that we can achieve the overall goal of having 60 satellites deployed and supporting service in uh, critical markets such as the U.S. and Europe. And we expect and we have we have a plan to do that through 2025 or 2026. Uh, and, and we expect to see the benefits of our funding efforts as the company ramps the business. We're beginning to uh, drive revenue generation, as I mentioned, primarily for government contracts. Some commercial revenue is starting. We talked about gateway equipment sales and service activations. And importantly, and at the core of our funding and how we think about uh, uh, how we approach raising capital, we will continue to look at certain non-GAAP revenue from non-dilutive customer prepayments. 
all told, we like where we are from a liquidity perspective. And uh, I speak on behalf of the executive team to say we remain confident that we're striking that right chord, that balance as it pertains to our, our business outlook. Well, thank you for that question. Um, Andy, that was the final question um, and concludes the question and answer session. Fantastic. Thank you for those questions. And uh, before joining our journey, and I just would, uh, I'd want to thank each of you um, as stockholders and supporters of AST Space Mobile. Thank you for those who sent in your proxy for this meeting. And of course, for all of those who are attending virtually, I'll now bring the meeting adjourned. Thank you and have a wonderful week. For more videos on AST, head over to our YouTube channel. And of course, please subscribe to Connected Space to help support our work.